Welcome back to Coding Commanders. I'm Commander Candy and today we are going to build a mobile hamburger menu using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It's going to be rad. Even if you're a total noob, I promise you, you will be able to complete today's project. And to help you out, I have all today's code in a comprehensive tutorial on codingcommanders.com. The direct link is in the video description. Our project is going to consist of three files, index.html, style.css, and main.js. We are going to start in the HTML file with our basic beginning and ending HTML tags. Then we will include our page head. Now we will include the page body. We have our script link to main.js. Inside our page head, we are going to include the page title. And we're also linking our style sheets. That includes our own CSS file, style.css as well as the Font Awesome library that we are going to use for our hamburger menu icon as well as for our social media icons. The Font Awesome link is written out on my corresponding web lesson. Inside the page body, we will start with our hamburger menu button. When the user clicks on that button with his mouse, a function that we're going to write called toggle is going to be executed. The button's ID is ham dash button. Remember, an ID is unique to only this element. The button's class name is also ham dash button. Remember that a class can be applied to an unlimited number of elements. Between our starting and ending button tags, we are going to place our font awesome hamburger menu icon. So that is what the user will see to click on. Next, we create our side menu container when our menu displays on a full-size screen, it's going to be a side menu. And when our menu displays on a mobile device, it will be a hamburger menu. Our side menu's ID and class name are both side-menu. The first element in our side menu is an H3 heading that just says menu. Now we are ready to construct our links. The internal links will not have a target attribute because we want them to open in the same tab. Our external links will have a target attribute because we want them to open in a different tab. And we're going to have the target attribute the same on every single external link. Users don't really like it when every link opens up a separate tab. We're going to write the text that the user is going to see on our links between the starting and ending link tags. And we're also going to include social media icons and a globe icon for our um, website between the starting and ending link tags. I seem to have spilled some water on my shirt, but the code must go on. We have finished index.html and we're gonna open it on up to test it out. Now it doesn't look like much yet. We're gonna write the CSS to make it look pretty and the JavaScript to make the button actually work. Now I'm in style.css and we're gonna start with some general formatting. The entire background of the body is gonna be black and all of the links are gonna not have any text decoration. That means it's, they're not gonna have that line underneath them. Now we're gonna work on the CSS for our side menu container. We're gonna set the background color. We are going to put in some padding. We're gonna set the border radius to 9px. Remember the border radius is what makes the corners more round or just keep a pointy, the higher the number, the rounder the corners will be. We're gonna set the color, which is the text color. We're gonna set the font family and give a backup just in case. We are going to set the box sizing to border box. I'll be back on that in just a moment. And we're gonna make the width 25%. So the side menu will take up 25% of the space. Let's go back to border box. Now by default, the width of an element does not include padding or uh, margins. Remember padding is the space within the element around the content and margin is the space around the element. But 
we want the width to include the whole enchilada. So that's why we're setting box sizing to border box. So width is gonna be the whole enchilada, including padding and margins. Now I rub my eyes and I'm looking a little bit like a raccoon, but the code must go on. We are gonna write the CSS s for the links that are inside our side menu on mouse hover we are changing the links inside of our side menus background color to dark red and text color to white but we ain't going to do it instantaneously we want it to happen progressively over 0.6 seconds and we'll add a little bit of padding to h3 elements inside the side menu now we are ready to write the CSS for our hamburger menu button. And we're referencing that button by its ID. That's why we're using a hashtag instead of a dot. You use a dot for a class name and a hashtag for an ID. By default, we want it to not display at all, display none. Now we are gonna use a media query to have our elements displayed differently for small screens than large screens. If a user is on a device that is 768px or less, then the side menu is not gonna display when they go to our page. And the width of our side menu element is gonna be 100% instead of 25. Also, on small devices, the hamburger button is going to display as a block element instead of displaying as none. Style.css is complete and we're ready to move on to our JavaScript. The JavaScript is what's gonna make our button work. And let's check out those transitions. Now we're gonna write the function toggle. Remember on our hamburger menu button, we set the on click attribute to toggle. This is the function that's gonna execute when the user clicks on that button. And we're gonna start off by declaring a variable. We're gonna let menu equal document, get element by ID, side menu. We're referencing our side menu by its ID, side dash menu. When the user clicks that hamburger button, if the display on that side menu element is blocked, that when they click that button, it's gonna turn to displaying as none. And in any other case, if they click that hamburger button, the menu display will change to block. So when a user's on a small device, just see the button and no menu. When they click on it, that menu's gonna appear. If the menu's already displaying and they click on it again, it's gonna disappear. And last but not least, we're gonna add an event listener so our application is going to be listening for somebody to click on that ham button and when they do they're going to execute the function toggle here's our final test and as you can see the project is in fine working order if you had any difficulties building this project you ran into any trouble please go to codingcommanders.com slash mobile dash hamburger dash menu I have all of today's code written out along with comprehensive tutorials. There's a lot more detail written there about today's code as well as several other tutorials linked to explain some of the concepts. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please comment below and let me know what video you would like me to make next. What do you want to learn about? If you have any questions, also be sure to reach out and check out the written lesson at CodingCommanders.com. Thank you again for watching my video, and until next time, happy coding!